so this is what's been slowing me down. Suit. Excuse me, sir. Read the sign. What does it say under that other sign? Nothing. It doesn't say anything. What a strange question. You go now. I just want to get home for my kid's birthday, but this whole leaf blowing, false advertising, traffic stopping, tax dollar squandering, workers on permanent coffee break, upper class money dodging, stolen car parts, stealing, sign changing society won't let me! And you know who's to blame? We all are! We say we hate lawyers, but we can't wait to sue somebody. We want leaders to make tough choices, then we vote them out when they do. We all want X-rated older women with her suit up her lips chat lines, then scream bloody murder when we get the bill. I ask you, what's happened to logic in this world? You're under arrest. For what? I have a right to speak my mind. We're arresting you for ranting in public without a starched collar. What kind of idiot law is... <laughs> <laughs> To maintain the illusion that you'll be treated as individuals, we're giving you a battery of psychological tests. Remember, there are no right and wrong answers, just sane and insane ones. You have 10 minutes to complete part one. Go. Pencils down. Who thinks 10 minutes actually passed? You have temporal disorders. The rest of you, please continue. Hey, 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 not so rough. He's up, Haystack. Don't dent it down. Oh! Who here thinks they just saw a big yellow duck? Okay, look, let me save you some time. I'm not like these other bathrobe-wearing, string-collecting, wife for hat mistaking wingnuts who think they're the messiah. <laughs> That's not for you to say. Now, is it Mr. Dukeman? I am Dr. Henri Ducharme, and this is Dr. Georg Marsink, and we will need to examine you by giving you some simple tests. Fine, fine, but no rectal probes, okay? I'm saving some things for my next honeymoon. Quiet! I will show you a picture. You will tell me what you see. <laughs> All I see is a little square. Not Satan worshippers dressed like my mother, and certainly not surrounded by clams who are trying to devour my flesh. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about your first sexual encounter? Well, it's, uh, it's quite a story. In fact, I never thought these things really happened to guys like me. Boy, was I wrong. I was a freshman at a small liberal arts college, and I was called in to see my professor, a 39, 23, 35 beauty whose large heaving breasts were barely concealed beneath her skimpy crop top. Suddenly, she grabbed my swollen... No, no! Your first sexual experience, not a letter to penthouse. This was my first sexual experience, and my second, and my third through 845th. In fact, if I could have a few minutes alone in a small town... Sue me, I'm colorful. Doesn't mean I belong in here making potholders with the wackos. Besides, what gives you the right to judge other people anyway? The diploma. Judging people is pretty much the main benefit. That and the license plates with MD on them. You can park almost anywhere. And when you think about it, isn't that exactly the point? Parking. And driving. And shopping. And eating. And working. Somewhere, somehow, they all got chewed up and spit back out. They don't taste like living anymore. Don't you see what it's like in this deranged, wearing blender of a world? Every day is an agonizing ordeal. Like balancing a pot of scalding water on your head while people whip your legs and butt. Oh, you never forget your senior prom. You think I'm sick? Well, the only disease I've got is modern life. A schnut-busting gauntlet of inefficiency and misery that's one long parade of letdowns, put-downs, trickle-downs, shutouts, freeze-outs, sell-outs, numb-nuts, nick and puts and ninrods. All making every day as much fun as waxing a flaming Pontiac with your tongue. Where even if you do luck into the possibility of some fleeting pleasure, like, say, if some nymphomaniac telephone operators with the muscle control of Romanian mat slappers agree to a little strip air hockey, it'll be over before it starts. Because some val lacking fetter-reeking cab jockey slams his checker up your hatchback, and the cab is owned by some pinata spanker 
motherfucker from a Santeria cult in Wakapa who starts shaking chicken bones at you and gives you a boil on your neck so big, all it needs is Michael Jordan's autograph to make it complete. And even with all this, with all this, I still drag my sorry butt off the ceiling every morning and stick my face in the reaping machine for one more day. Knowing when it's time to flash the cosmic card key at those pearly gates, I won't be in the coffin anyway, because some underhanded undertaker sold my heart, pancreas, and other assorted good and plenty to that same Santeria cult. So does anybody really wonder why anybody is hanging on to sanity by the atoms on the tips of their fingernails while life dirty dances on their digits? And is it really any wonder that I seem deranged? But <laughs> that's probably nothing you haven't heard a hundred times before. Alrighty, I'll see your Xanax and raise you two phenobarbitals. <sighs> Too rich for my blood. I make it. Oh, oh no! Oh, the shakes are starting. I need my El Dopa. <laughs> Should have thought of that before you bluffed my pair of fives with that straight flush. So, Patsies, how's it work? How do they know who's not so and who isn't? Well, a definitive clinical response is almost impossible given the vagaries of the human mind. For a more informed answer, I'd have to ask my invisible friend, the great Tom Toon. Yeah, I wouldn't have a clue either. But I might. Mostly, though, sheep have the biggest sinks. Uh -huh. Well, no matter. All I really want to know is why I got to be stuck in this lunatorium when all I really need is... Dinner! Not too shabby. None of Bernice's kelp or bran and sporks. My favorite harmless utensil. Uh. If I were allowed to wear a belt, I'd loosen it contentedly. I'd sure love to sit out on a... Patio! Everyone to the patio for evening relaxation. I feel like a... Now I wonder what's on. Television! Breakfast! Hey, guys, you gotta read this Gatsby book. And so we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. It's sad, but, but beautiful, you know? Boom. So, here I am, about to be tapioca. And make no mistake, I am a nutcase. It didn't work on the outside, didn't work on the inside. So what else could I be but crazy? Clearly, the only thing to do is hickory smoke my brain to perfection with 10,000 volts of electricity. <laughs> 10,000 volts? Good morning. Duckman, are you all right? Those doctors gave you electroshock. Good for me. You don't mind having your brain destroyed? Heck no! They're board-certified professionals. They know what's best. Oh, boy! Highway construction! How wonderful to see the government using my hard-earned money to improve my life. Duckman, those workers are just goofing off. Nonsense and tosh, Corny. They're using their cowboy boots to tamp down the asphalt. Besides... I love this song. Cornfed's log, supplemental. Duckman has become a cheerful, mindless zombie. In many ways, this is an improvement, but his pro-country music attitude has me worried. Look, a note from my family. Welcome home, Duckman. We have a dangerous gas leak and have fled for our lives. Go in and take care of it. Oh, how thoughtful. They spelled my name right. Hello, gas company. I have a dangerous leak. Well, great. Thank you. They said to wait here, and they'll show up whenever they feel like it. Doesn't that annoy you? Of course not. After all, I'm paying them. Duck man, you can't keep waiting. Oh, nonsense. I'm sure they'll be here before winter. You need to get some fresh air. You're right, old friend. There's nothing like fresh air. Oh, well, serves me right for disobeying gas company orders. Breathe this. Terrific! What? Well, what's going on? I reversed your electroshock. Lucky I sent away for that course in neurosurgery. Hey, if Sally Struthers is selling, I'm buying. You see, Duck Man, I realize that it's the person who can cheerfully accept the madness of this world that is truly insane. You said a mouthful, old swine of mine. That hospital may have been a stinking hellhole, but the so-called normal world is really bad. So let's face it, the only answer, the only sane way to deal with any of this is ruthless random acts of violence, making sure they're all wiped out, the innocent and guilty alike, in a hail of gunfire, cleft in twain by my mighty sword, trampled into the dust and squashed like the stupid, tiny, unsafe. Segmented insects they are! And...
Of course, I may need to do a little fine-tuning. Oi.